Hello, thank you for joining us for our Lenten Reflections on the Scriptures. Uh, I'm going to take a moment to look at the scriptures, uh, Scripture readings for um, Thursday the 2nd of April and to share with you a few reflections. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in our minds and hearts we pray. We firmly believe you are Holy Spirit inspired the scriptures and we require that same spirit, something of that same inspiration in order to discern and understand them, to be guided by them and to act upon them. Pour out that spirit upon us generously, we pray this day. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I hope you're well and calm staying safe and healthy. So the reading of the church offers us in the lectionary today, Thursday in the fifth week of Lent, is from the book of Genesis. Abram bowed to the ground and God said this to him, Here now is my covenant with you. You shall become the father of a multitude of nations. You shall no longer be called Abram. Your name shall be Abraham, for I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you most fruitful. I will make you into nations, and your issue shall be kings. I will establish my covenant between myself and you, and your descendants after you, generation after generation. A covenant in perpetuity, to be your God, and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you, and to your descendants after you, the land you are living in, the whole land of Canaan, to own in perpetuity, and I will be your God. God said to Abraham, you on your part shall maintain my covenant, yourself and your descendants after you, generation after generation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, like Tuesday, where we had the reading from the book of Numbers, which recounted an element in the history of Israel and the journey across the desert, We've got uh, another moment of that today, much earlier from the book of Genesis, the covenant made with Abraham. It's, uh, it's one of the major themes of, of the Old Testament. And of course, as we will learn particularly on Holy Thursday, at this time next week, in the evening Mass of the Lord's Supper, that notion of covenant is still very significant and very important in the mind of the Lord Jesus and what he thinks he's doing. Uh, the, the prayer of consecration that we use at Mass um, is about the covenant in the blood of the Lamb. And uh, it's, a, it's a thematic that is very dependably present in all of the Hebrew Scriptures. It, covenant is an agreement, a, a treaty between peoples. Um, normally, the treaty is between a stronger and a weaker party, in that the weaker party promises fidelity to the stronger, and the stronger promises protection to the weaker. And uh, of course that's the covenant God makes with Abraham. I've suggested to you that one of the thematics of this particular week of Lent is um, trial and tribulation. And we've encountered people in various forms of difficulty. Um, Susanna unjustly accused the people uh, in the prophet Ezekiel living in exile, the uh, Shadrach, Mesach and the Bendigo and the burning fiery furnace and the people plagued by the, the bite of fiery serpents. Today, well, the problem Abraham faces is that he's very elderly, 99 years old we're told, and his wife Sarai at this point is also very elderly. And this is chapter 17 of the book of Genesis, so when God tells Abraham he'll have a child, he laughs. And in chapter 18, when the three men, the angels of the Lord, appear to Abraham and Sarai at the, at the Oak of Mamre, and uh, Sarai overhears that uh, she will give birth to a son, she laughs too. And indeed, that's where Isaac gets his name. It's Yitzhak in Hebrew. Yitzhak is to snigger. So he's, uh, he's, he begins. Uh, his existence on earth with incredulity 
from his father and incredulity from his mother. Um, and he gets the nickname the Laughter uh, then because of that. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a, a difficulty that Abraham has. He's had no children, uh, neither has Sarah, and uh, they're both very elderly. So that he should be the father of great many descendants is rather improbable, to say the least. Um, and so he faces that particular challenge. How is it going to be? How can God make something powerful, useful, and indeed generational out of an elderly couple with no children? It's also a, a, a significant fact that Abraham gets his name changed from Abraham to Abraham. And uh, in the scriptures, if anyone gets a change of name, they get a change of role, a change of task. Um, it's very frequent um, in the New Testament, less so, but Simon, who is called Peter, is, is a good example of that. And of course, the name he gets describes what he does to be the rock on which the Lord will build his church. So Abraham, in fact, can mean as a kind of acronym for the father of a great many people. And you need the, the H in the middle of the, of the Hebrew word for that to work. Uh, so the change from Abraham to Abraham, while not particularly significant, uh, does enable a, an acronym to develop. And of course, when God says he'll make his name great, well, quite literally he does. He makes it longer. And that counts in Hebrew uh, to make it great. And Sarah gets a new name too, um, because she's going to be the, the mother of, of Yitzhak, the snigger. Uh, so the, the, their roles change. So um, it's important. We, we, we've, we have a phrase that we use uh, from the prophet Jeremiah that we're going to learn about tomorrow, that uh, the Lord has called us by our name. Um, and the psalm echoes that and goes on to talk about being carved in the palm of the Lord's hand. Um, that notion that we're close to him and precious to him and that he never abandons his people is uh, course the thematic of this wandering in the desert where the various trials and tribulations that the people of Israel encounter are all overcome by the power of God, not always immediately, not always in the way envisaged by the people, and not always immediately to their satisfaction, but resolution does come and the blessing of God, faithful to his covenant through thick and thin, um, is always resolute and always present. It's good for us to hear that, I think, in these days where we are afflicted uh, and we are separated from one another, where we don't have the freedom that we're used to and that the future that we look to is very difficult indeed. And uh, we were all looking forward to celebrating our Lenten journey together. We started it just a few weeks ago. And we all look forward, as we all do, to celebrating Holy Week together with the magnificent liturgies of the Church, which teaches of the Paschal mystery, of the suffering, death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, of the gift of his body and blood, of the command of service. It's, a, it's a, a powerful absence in our lives, a real fast, this Lent, from the Eucharist and from those celebrations of the church's liturgy that give us life. But reflect again on Sarah and on Abraham. Improbable and yet God begins a great journey with them. A journey that they didn't expect and a journey to which they had no roadmap and the destination well, purely on the basis of God's word to them. He would be with them in the generations that would follow. So Abraham is invited to make a covenant with God to ensure that his descendants know about it and God in his turn promises to be faithful to his covenant to Abraham and to his subsequent generations. We are the descendants of Abraham. He's our father in faith. So those things promised to him are promised to us too. So that he will be our God and we will be his people. It's our fervent prayer. Our prayer to St. Rock. 
O blessed is St Rock, patron of the victims of plague, have pity on those who lie upon a bed of suffering. Your power was so great when you were in this world that by the sign of the cross many were healed of their diseases. Now that you are in heaven, your power is not less. Offer then to God our hopes and our prayers, and obtain for us all the health we seek. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Rock, pray for us that we may be preserved from all diseases of body and of soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you stay safe and well. I hope your basic needs are catered for. I hope you have kind neighbours. And I hope you are kind as a neighbour to those that you know who may be in need. Perhaps a telephone call to some of them 